All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for taking time to attend the panel. Um, uh, I'll be your host. Uh, my name is Eiko Oka. Uh, I've been working for SNBC in New York for uh, last 10 years. And uh, I'm sure that like, I know uh, many of you are wondering why uh, you know, the people from a Japanese bank are sitting here. So uh, I'm going to give you an experience a bit of it. So uh, I'm uh, uh, heading a corporate advisory division in North America. Uh, supporting uh, large Japanese corporations identify investment partnership opportunities uh, with uh, emerging technology companies in North America. So uh, I studied the, uh, the group uh, in 2013. Uh, since then, uh, so I realized that, like, uh, you know, uh, I see I saw the new technologies being created in the Silicon Valley, New York, and other parts of the uh, United States. I thought that like, I could be helpful to uh, Japanese companies, or even for you know, uh, venture capitals and uh, uh, startups in the U.S. Uh, when if I can bridge uh, both of them. So, and then uh, over the nine past nine years, I and my team members uh, created like a dialogue network with uh, venture capitals, startups uh, based in uh, the U.S. and together. Uh, so. We, we have a um, uh, net network of over 150 or so uh, venture capitals and uh, w more than 1,000 uh, startups in North America. So together, uh, I and my team created uh, actual like, kind of business matching and introduction in opportunities, uh, more than 200 uh, in the last uh, nine years or so. so uh, uh, and then some of them, of course, uh, several have led to uh, multi-billion dollar uh, investments and uh, collaborative projects. So, and then, um, so among several topics, uh, climate tech has been a key area of interest from uh, Japanese companies and uh, have seen uh, several success in this area. So this year, my team will focus on uh, like a climate tech more. Uh, some of the themes are food tech, ag tech, uh, hydrogen, and the batteries. And I'm very happy to uh, be here with all of you today and learn about emerging trends and the technologies in the sustainability uh, thesis. So my goal uh, for today is to get a, a deeper understanding of uh, how entrepreneurs and the investors are uh, you know, addressing these uh, sustainability issues uh, and the technology development to solve them. So I will focus on uh, uh, lesser known uh, solutions to highlight new perspectives on the technological challenges in the fight against the climate change. So we are lucky to have uh, like a, uh, Yosuke Maeda-san, uh, the CEO of Water, uh, who is uh, you know, kind of emerging technology companies based out of Japan. And then uh, we have Murat, uh, he is uh, a top tier uh, venture capitalist uh, based in New York, uh, having a, a modern 12 years, 13 years uh, investment uh, experience in the North America. All right, so. The first of all, uh, we want to uh, uh, talk about like, a little bit of uh, water issues. So water is a fundamental resource for the sustainable human life. Uh, the accessibility of clean water, uh, obviously, uh, through many undeveloped countries, is rapidly becoming a decremental humanitarian uh, problem, a direct result of uh, exponential population growth and with the such swift consumption, uh, uh, usable water sources are quickly drying up and uh, diminishing. So, but water is addressing these issues. So, uh, uh, Yosuke-san, please tell us uh, what is your purpose and uh, how you are working to end the uh, global water issues here. Okay, okay, uh, thank you for your introduction. Uh, 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 hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yosuke, and I'm the CEO of Water. Uh, our company is a Japanese startup dedicated to the, uh, solving the world of water problems. Okay? And uh, this is my first experience of pitching to a Japanese audience in English. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, please, next slide. All right. uh, the world's water crisis is becoming more serious each year with population growth and uh, climate change. It is said that by 2030, there will be a 40% shortage of water for the uh, world's population. 
So even if water and sewage systems cover the entire world at this very moment, uh, the water crisis will not, will not be solved. And in developed countries, the cost of uh, renewing aging pipelines is a serious uh, financial problem. As a result, Japanese water and wastewater utilities uh, have annual operating deficits of uh, 40 billion US dollars. Next slide. And now, we have two existing products, ultra compact direct portable reuse system. Since more than 98% of the wastewater can be reused, and the recycled water quality is drinkable. One is used by the government in times uh, of disaster, and other, other one is sold B2B for hand washing applications in uh, all over Japan. We already have uh, hundreds of our products in operation uh, all over Japan, and millions of people use them uh, annually. Uh, this is the largest number of uh, DPR, direct portable use systems, in the world. Very impressive. Yeah. Uh, in, next slide. Uh, in fact, our system was used in the Turkey big earthquake. I'm right is from uh, Turkey. <laughs> I'm Turkey, Turkish originally. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, your wife is uh, Japanese? Japanese, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, officially. <laughs> uh, we want to fundamentally solve water problems not, not only in uh, times, times of peace, uh, but also in times of disaster. Disaster resilience is another benefit of small-scale water reuse. Next slide. So our vision is to transform the industry from large-scale decentralized water infrastructure, water infrastructure to small-scale decentralized, decentralized water infrastructure. What we purpose is an uh, what, what we propose uh, in, is an ultra-compact uh, direct portable water reuse system at the point of use of water, at the household level. Recycling water would solve water shortage. It's very easy. But also, not having long pipelines would solve financial challenges and reduce carbon, carbon dioxide emissions by a uh, huge construction. This is a proposal for both climate change uh, mitigation and adaptation. And this is also a pro proposal uh, to shift water infrastructure, uh, construction industry, to manufacturing industry. Okay? This is our key concept. Yes. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, uh, here is uh, our new product uh, we call Water Unit. It's the world's first home scale direct portable reuse system, already in use in Japan and some of Caribbean nations, where water and sewage systems cannot be built. Since more than 98% of wastewater can be reused and the, drink, uh, the recycled water quality is drinkable, the remaining 2% of water. It can be replenished by uh, rainwater or any fresh water uh, to make the system in self-sufficient in water. Okay, next slide. And our marketing strategy is quite simple, very simple. We we expand our product to areas with higher water and wastewater costs uh, than ours. Uh, the first, we we are entering the islands, nation, and rural areas of Japan. Which, uh, have, which have very high cost. Mm. And the second, uh, we plan to enter markets in dry countries with strong water stress. Next, please. Oh, by the way, quick question for you here. So uh, you established your business in 2013 or so? So the, uh, did you intend to do this from the day one? I mean, the global expansion. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, at, um, boss? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Everything is both. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is our. Uh, how can I say? Uh, uh, turning point. This is our turning point. Uh, our international recognition uh, began last year. Uh, the last year. The last year, we were awarded by the British Royal F uh, Family at COP26. To uh, this led us to global, uh, to several countries in the Commonwealth of uh, the British Commonwealth uh, of Nations. Next, please. Uh, one of the nations of common, uh, Commonwealth, uh, this is the Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, the island nations uh, with uh, strong water stress. The country of island, uh, Antigua and Barbuda has decided to utilize uh, our system in 2023. The country is one of the most water stressed nations in the world. And the uh, cost of water and waste treatment is more than three times ours. They chose water as the uh, standard water infrastructure, and uh, they chose water as their standard spec for their public housing. In this way, we were advancing uh, fundamental and structural solutions to world's water problems. Yeah, this is. Uh, water. This is our company. Thank you. Great. Uh, very impressive. Thank you very much. All right. Next, uh, the Murad. So I know you are uh, now raising a climate tech fund of uh, 200 million, but like uh, you originally started, you know, uh, the accelerator uh, in New York, investing a wide range of uh, like early stage startups. So uh, can, can I ask why you became to focus on uh, kind of a climate? and how you plan to address this issue as uh, venture capitals, as well as and then along with your activities with uh, Japanese companies and governments, uh, you know, with uh, your self-introduction here. Definitely, thank you very much. Very nice to be here. Uh, I lived in Japan briefly around 18 years ago. My wife is Japanese and I speak bad Japanese and uh, I've been working with many Japanese partners. But we started in New York City as a pre-seed fund, an accelerator, 13 years ago. And so far, as you can see from the numbers, we invested in 300 startups in general, just technology companies in general. And these companies are worth around $10 billion, and they've raised close to $2 billion. And we are the most active VC fund in New York City. And there are some, some of these companies have become successful. But in the past um, three, four years, we actually realized we were investing in climate companies. We invest as a journalist fund, but since the climate problem is so big, it's all economy, and there are not enough early stage climate investors in the world, these climate companies were coming to us. So we invested in around 36 climate companies. And this actually made us more excited because we saw the economic opportunity. It's really, uh, as one of my LPs say, he said he doesn't want to save the world, he wants to make money. And climate right now is the best way to make money because everything we are using needs to change. Like people are migrating to new areas, right? That's why water is needed. Water box mm. is needed because everything is changing. We need new services, new products. So we are now, as Okasan mentioned, we are raising a $200 million uh, climate fund. And we are very excited to have LPs that see this opportunity. But at the same time, we have around maybe 400 climate companies in our pipeline we are looking at, mm. and they are solving amazing problems, uh, like green hydrogen, or software to optimize supply chains, or energy transition, optimizing solar panel storage in look like your home battery, so you can extend the lifetime. So 
in a way, we really are sitting, all of us, are sitting on top of this huge wave as startups and investors. And the climate uh, problems are now so visible. California, in Los Angeles, two days ago, there was uh, like 1.5 meter of snow. It never happened ever before. Los Angeles, 1.5 meter snow. So everything is changing. We need to really change things. And we are raising our fund to really fix these problems and work with um, the right people. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, so uh, obviously, like, as I said earlier, uh, the Japanese companies are very interested in the climate attack. And then uh, Murad is been, you know, has been a very helpful for them to identify investment or partnership opportunities in North America. So uh, could you a little bit uh, touch upon uh, your like, uh, you know, uh, uh, examples of collaboration with the Absolutely. Japanese companies? Um, yeah. so. so we are very lucky uh, to be working with many Japanese partners. And actually, the, our closest partner is sitting right next to me, uh, Okasan <laughs> with you. SMBC. Uh, they've been our anchor LP in our funds, and we work very closely together. So I want to point out one thing. So Okasan introduced himself at the beginning, and he said something very important. He led 200 funding rounds between US startups and Japanese corporations. Those are introductions that he made to Japanese corporations. He found the right startups in the US. He connected them. He also does the opposite, which is he helps us find opportunities in Japan. He shows us Japanese startups. He finds us Japanese partners. And then for Japanese corporations, he finds the right US uh, startups, US funds they can invest in. So in a way, like by having Okasan as our partner, we are able to see the Japanese ecosystem, Japanese startups. Japanese corporations are seeing the US startups. So he's kind of connecting those two ecosystems together, which is very difficult. For example, Vota Box, the company, they, I think, they must have US investors. They don't have right now. So we'll <laughs> fix that. <laughs> yeah, so Okasan will help that, them. Right get some US investors so we can actually take Vota global quicker than usual. We are also very lucky to work with Japan's government, Jetro, METI, Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Uh, I've known Koikasan now for around three years. She is an amazing force. And I think her background that she went to school in Egypt. So she really gets the global mindset. And then she was uh, in government positions for a long time. And right now, she's driving Tokyo to become a center for global startups. And we are... You want to flip to the next one here? Yes. Actually, yes. So, <laughs> so actually, this is to prove that I know Koike-san on the left, Koike-san visiting our office in New York City. And on the right side, uh, I'm visiting our office in Shinjuku. But we see a big opportunity here because Japan as it opens up, as Japanese founders go global, and global startups come to Japan, mm. I think Japanese startup mm. environment will increase quite a lot. And that is very exciting. And that's actually why I think like Oko-san uh, went, went to business school in the US. He's been in the New York for 10 years. Mm. We need people like Oko-san to connect those two ecosystems mm. together so we can have more collaborations. Like, Vota needs a large U.S. investor exactly. to be on their board, so we can take them global. Right now, you're operating in Japan, right? We'll, we'll come to that. But we are very lucky that, I'm very lucky that uh, we are really able to come to Japan, invest in Japan, mm -hmm. find opportunities with Okasan. So I think it's very important that U.S. and Japan should work very yep. closely. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, thank you for uh, uh, you know my com comments. So, uh, but I uh, of course I believe that like, there will be more and more opportunities, uh, you know, to collaborate, uh, you know, the U.S. startups with the Japanese companies and the vice versa. Um, yeah. So, yeah. all right. Um, so next, so uh, sustainability issues and uh, like a climate are both like you know very like a 
uh, broad. So, but like, uh, I want to touch upon recent trends in uh, industrial innovation uh, in relation to uh, sustainability. So the transition to a low carbon economy will require a range of um, uh, technologies from, of course, EVs to renewable energies, uh, generation and storage. Uh, many of the technologies is still in development, although significant progress has been made and many will reach maturity in the near future. So by investing in these technologies, Investors can accelerate the transition to a low carbon economy. So, again, so uh, could you uh, describe the you know the current situation in the U.S. a little bit? So, in the U.S., the public opinion in the past three four years really changed a lot with all the flooding and the fires in California and all the storms and snow in Los Angeles, and the U.S. government in the past fifteen months passed three different laws. The first is the Infrastructure uh, Act, the second is CHIPS, yep. and the most important is the Inflation Reduction Act. Mm -hmm. So it's named really in a wrong way, but yep. uh, you know, it's really the Inflation Reduction Act, and those three laws provide around like one trillion dollars of tax benefits if you buy a solar panel or if you buy a heat pump if you buy an electric vehicle, if you generate green hydrogen, the US government gives you money. 30% of your solar panel costs, you can reduce it from your taxes. And the interesting thing is the IRA does not have a limit. There's no cap. If more people apply for the 30% rebate, they get it. Credit Suisse thinks IRA will be worth around $1 trillion itself. And if you look at the numbers, we're talking about $1.5 trillion of money mm -hmm. enabling climate startup products mm -hmm. to become cheaper, more affordable. So this is a big game changer. And if you look at it, this decade, US government in is increasing spending on climate issues three times. That's huge. It's huge. Yeah. And I'm actually, I've been talking to many people since I arrived in Tokyo on Sunday. I, we are expecting Japanese government to do something about this. Either increase Japanese government spending or pass the savings on to consumers in Japan. But I'm sure something will happen. But uh, this is like a game changer. This is also bringing so much capital into the climate tech space. Many family offices, multi-billion dollar uh, money managers, they are coming into the space because of the three acts mm -hmm. in the U.S. So uh, then, uh, based on uh, those like uh, you know uh, subsidizes, how uh, I mean, Absolutely. different companies and then investors address these issues. Absolutely. So here's one thing: mm -hmm. if we had all the money in the world today and in peace spend it, still we cannot fix the climate problem. We need to invent new technologies. Bill Gates, uh, he started Breakthrough Energy. It's a $6 billion fund investing in climate technologies. Mm. He said that half the innovations we need are not invented yet. For example, green hydrogen should be cheaper than uh, electricity from like oil and gas, but it is not. Mm. Someone needs to invent that. The biggest one is nuclear fusion. You know, what happens on the sun when two atoms melt together and energy comes out, that is still like not working. You need to put more energy into nuclear fusion than comes out. So we need more innovations, more technology. And if we don't invent those technologies, uh, everything will be flooded. The world will end. The temperature will rise so much. It is scary. Mm -hmm. So my point is like we need massive, massive innovation. Mm -hmm. And that is coming from here and you, mm -hmm. all the entrepreneurs. Like we need to enable mm -hmm. you to create new climate solutions. Mm. Right, but like, I believe that. Thank you, Murad. So uh, I believe that uh, the momentum, you know, has been, I mean, in increasing. Right. So and actually, um, like uh, 2022 uh, was an enormous year for the climate tech. So as you can see here. Uh, the U.S. invested more climate tech in 2022 
done the entire uh, clean tech 1.0 boom uh, from uh, 2006 through uh, 2011. So Climate Tech Ventures invest in now 40 times larger than the, it was a decade, decade ago. So as of January, uh, there are 83 climate unicorns uh, globally. And then this is an impressive achievement given the last year's uh, you know, challenging market conditions yep. in the US. So, but here is a question again for you, Murat. Yep. Um, so the climate crisis is a physical problem and the many companies that VCs have backed have a significant hardware component. So some people think that like a climate tech investment takes too long to exit. Um, and so some VCs don't want to invest these areas. So uh, do you see any you know, like, uh, issues in the funding gap? And then even so, maybe you can see the opportunities as well. So that, yeah, could you? Thank you. Actually, that? this is a question I really like. Some investors think climate companies take 20 years to exit, and they think they will never make their money. But if you look at data, not my opinion, but data, the volume of dollar exits in the climate space increased 70% in the last mm. two years each year. From 2020 to 2021, 21 to 22, the exits increased 70%, 70. Mm. Like, we have never seen any sector like this before. It's exploding. The average time to exit is nine years. And companies become unicorns much quicker. Mm -hmm. And this graph, is actually shocking because in 2022, global venture capital decreased 30%. Right. But look at climate, it yeah. increased 89%. So this is a sector that is exploding. The, the mainstream, the public wants these solutions. Mm -hmm. The governments are supporting it. Corporations are committing to being net zero by 2030, mm. 2035. Mm -hmm. so, huge opportunity like uh if i were much younger i would start a climate company <laughs> but like i'm too old so i'm just like now investing, investing. in climate companies <laughs> but uh, i i really highly recommend mm. everyone here to either invest mm. in climate companies or mm. start climate companies yeah. just like why does that right mm. but like uh, you know uh, in reality so at this moment as you can see here and then many of you can uh, emerge in so uh uh in a uh, uh, mobility and the energy storage distributions are uh, kind of dominant in the mega rounds. And then uh, in storage and the distribution, we continue to see uh, batteries dominate, uh, followed by alternative storage, um, energy grids for distribution, and the EV charging. Um, obviously, in mobility, uh, the vertical uh, vehicles such as cars, trucks, uh, and motorcycles continue to be a very popular category. So, uh, yep. uh, but we, you know, would like to see uh, the more technologies in the other areas, right? So one of uh, I'm gonna give you like a one example here. So uh, obviously, so the ads for energy resources, uh, ammonia has uh, also been gaining uh, attention in recent years. So as an example, so I just uh, wanted to introduce an Amoji, a uh, startup based in Brooklyn, New York, uh, which is developing an am ammonia engine. So last month they announced the uh, successful uh, testing on the first ever ammonia-powered zero-emission track. So the, my team uh, has been helping this company to identify Japanese uh, customers and partners and investors uh, for in you know, the last like, a couple of years. And then uh, eventually, like last year, we connected a major Japanese logistics company with this company. So, um, and then, uh, so, uh, so uh, in energy uh, space, do you see any other you know, right. opportunities? So. Absolutely. So the title of the panel is like innovations that defy common sense. For example, on this screen, you can see green methanol. So methanol is a much denser version of hydrogen. Hydrogen is very like loose. You cannot put it in pipelines. They're gonna, it's going to escape. It's not energy dense. So you cannot really like, you need to squeeze it. And when you can squeeze it, uh, you can turn it into methanol, but it needs to be green methanol. You cannot release carbon when you create methanol. So this is an innovation that is going to change the industry in a major way. The other really interesting thing is this. 
iron air batteries mm. work by iron getting oxygen and like creating rust. And when you reverse the rust, you get the energy back. But this technology is from 1970s. In the 70s, they invented iron air batteries, but it was never used because people said, we don't need those, we have lithium, lithium iron batteries. But now they're making a comeback because you need large, longer term storage for residential and business uses. So iron air batteries is something that is going to really be important for us. The other one is solar cells have come down in costs in the past like 20 years since CleanTech 1.0. Mm -hmm. But perovskite is a very uh, unique crystal structure. If you put perovskite on top of solar cells, the efficiency increased by 20%. So this is very important for increasing, getting more out of solar cells because right now, mm -hmm. even though they improved a lot, they are still not very efficient. Like they convert very low percentage of sun hitting on them. So all these really uh, unknown innovations can change our lives in a major way. Right. Yeah, thank you. So, and then again, of course, uh, you know, to address like a climate issues. Uh, so energy is just a one part of those, you know, like a, uh, uh, solutions. So uh, do you have any other like innovation on the radar? Uh, so, yosuke -san. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know two companies. One is uh, green hydrogen and one is uh, coral hatching. Uh, but uh, the topics of uh, hydrogen uh, spent more much time. Yep. So, I want to uh, introduce, uh, introduce you to uh, you, uh, the company. Of, uh, That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, 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 coral hatching. Yes. The company name is uh, Inoka. Mm -hmm. uh, the company founded by my friend. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. For the first time in the world, they have succeeded in the artificially hatching corals. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, corals are extremely important yeah. for the, uh, the Earth's the ocean uh, ecosystem. Environment? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now they are uh, being lost rapidly mm -hmm. due to uh, marine pollution. Uh, they are the, a great company with uh, technology and passion to artificially uh, restore corals. And on uh, uh, the other hand, uh, the, my friend German uh, green hydrogen generator startups, uh, they, are, uh, they are developing the uh, ultra compact and uh, decentralized uh, generator of green hydrogen. Nice. Yeah. Uh, they are similar approach. Uh, they, they do similar approach with us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think the keyword is uh, shifting to uh, manufacturing. Mm. Yeah. Got it. It's faster. I see. Yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, so I also uh, see the uh, you know like a new technologies in the ag tech, in the food tech, and also biotechnologies uh, also like uh, important related to uh, like a climate tech as well. But uh, you know we don't have a time to touch upon this. So uh, um, let's moving uh, on. Um, so so I believe that okay, these uh, technologies have the potential not to only help address the climate change and the sustainability issues, but deliver a broad range of additional benefits across the economy, society, and the environment. Uh, so many entrepreneurs uh, tackle existing social uh, issues and then pain points companies people are facing. And then you uh, investors encourage them to create innovative technology to defy common sense, right? Yes. Yeah. So, but what does it mean, actually? Um, so. Maybe your, sure. I mean, yeah. that's really entrepreneurs what they do. But I like to ask Wadesan. Nine years ago, you started this company, and many people said to you, "Oh, you cannot filter water to like potable drinkable water in a box." But what did you say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so face yep. next, right? <laughs> uh, how can I say? Uh, we can now uh, use. Uh, communication, telecommunications, and electricity, uh, even in the African village, African savanna, and uh, American 
uh, desert, but water is not. In the first, uh, 21st century, uh, other infrastructure has uh, already begun to change. Mm. As a result, telecommunications has en entered the pocket. Enter the pocket. Like this. Mm. Enter the pocket. And in just 20 years, we now have access to wireless communications everywhere mm -hmm. in, in the world. And our challenge is similar in the water field. Simply put, uh, manufacturing is faster than construction. On the other hand, uh, no, 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 uh, construction. The value chain is different is in terms of efficiency in uh, solving physical problems. Mm -hmm. In the const construction industry, uh, everything is in an individual process. On the other hand, in the manufacturing industry, Everything uh, is the uh, standardized process. Mm -hmm. uh, so manufacturing is faster. In other words, shift, shifting, shift, uh, shift to manufacturing is a valid approach mm -hmm. uh, in areas uh, than other, other than, other, other than uh, areas, areas as, than others, uh, for example. Uh, one of for one of examples is water. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And then uh, I like that uh, your business uh, um, uh, concept uh, from a more like a decentralized uh, water system. That's also one. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, uh, we can discuss water, but okay, time is limited. So uh, maybe the uh, yosuke san the final comment to uh, maybe entrepreneurs or investors or like a so socials global, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, I think the uh, biggest challenge of the 21st century mm. is uh, environmental issues and uh, uh, population issues. These are both physical problems, so we have two options, uh, manufacturing and construction. And manufactur ma manufacturing is uh, the faster in delivering uh, physical value or solving physical issues. So shifting manufacturing is uh, the very key word in this age of periods, uh, rapid solutions to environmental problems or uh, uh, population problems. Yeah, Th great. this is uh, what I want to say. Yeah. Okay, great. So on time? <laughs> great on time. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, so thank you very much again, uh, uh, everyone, to attend the panel. And then thank you for the, uh, like, uh, you know, joining us, me uh, here today. So uh, yeah, thank you very much.